Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I have a gaming computer. This is the Asus Tough Gaming FX505D, and it comes in many variants. This one is the FX505DT-BB71-CB. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Now this laptop was released, this edition of the laptop was released in the year of 2019 and actually won a Red Dot Design Award. You know, it's actually pretty easy to see why. There has been special attention to detail with your gamer WASD keys, but also an oblong spacebar designed to be hit by the thumb when using the WASD keys. It features a full numpad, arrow keys here, and overall is fairly well built. Speaking of the build quality, it is military standard 810G tested. So even though it might look like a plastic fantastic, there's actually some structural rigidity to it that means that this machine could actually stand the test of time. We also of course have an RGB Aura keyboard, and this whole thing is being driven by Ryzen CPUs and NVIDIA GeForce GTX GPUs. Let's dive into the specifications that we've got. For a screen, we have a 15.6 inch 1920 by 1080 display, and it came in a 60, 120, or 144 hertz refresh rate. In terms of the CPU, we are looking at an AMD Ryzen 7 or 5, the 5 being the 3550H, and the 7 being the 3750H. That does include a Vega graphics chip of about 512 megabytes, but more importantly, that can be switched up to an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 of four gigabytes. RAM is a maximum of 32 gigabytes of DDR4, 2400 megahertz, and the whole thing is being driven by an M.2 NVMe SSD and three cell 48 watt hour battery. And the whole thing is actually coming in at around 2.2 kilograms plus the adapter. And the adapter for these gaming laptops, of course, is rather sizable. And I don't normally feature the adapter, but there it is. So as you can see, we do have a pretty sizable power supply uh, driving this entire thing, which is great, but it does mean that you are carrying a fair bit of weight and cumbersome cable. So we'll get rid of that for now, but it is important to take a look at. The touchpad is all right, nothing really to write home about, but realistically you're going to be using a gaming laptop with a gaming mouse, so it's really not that necessary. So with that being said, let's go ahead and close this up and take a look at some of the features that we've got. So we do have a tougher exterior and there is a lot of flex here. However, it is 810G tested, so there has to be a lot of give for that flexibility. On the left-hand side, we do have the power plug, the Ethernet port, HDMI 2.0, USB 2.0, USB 3.1 Gen 1 2 ports, and a headphone microphone combo jack. Along the front, not much going on. And on the right-hand side, we have a Kensington lock slot. Now, you'll notice that this is very thin on ports. In fact, for the age of this machine, we do not have any USB Type-C ports, which is a bit unfortunate to see. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got going on on the inside. And to do that, we have a series of screws to remove, many of which on this model are already missing because this came from the internet. Well, it came from eBay, I think, but let's go ahead and spin out the remaining screws that we do have to see what upgradability might look like. So we've got one there, and then we've got a series of screws along the front as well. And those, at least on the edges, are different lengths. We are going to need to make a mental note of the screw pattern. All right, and with all the screws out, we are going to have to pry up this plastic case. And it doesn't look like there's any great place to start, but the fitting is relatively tight, so I am going to use a metal pry tool to start. 
And now that I've got it, wow, that's actually crazy easy. Props to them. <laughs> All right, let's take a look on the inside and see what we have. And it's actually kind of exciting. So the cooling system is two independent fans, which are sucking air in from the bottom and blowing it out the back. And that's important because with a gaming keyboard, if you're left or right-handed, you don't have the fans exhausting onto your mouse. That's fair enough. Now, the battery here looks a little odd. In fact, I would anticipate that I'm used to seeing a larger battery than this. But this is a 3-cell 48-watt-hour battery, which is supposed to be what we find on the inside. We do have a 2.5-inch bay for all sorts of drive sizes to store all your games on or your footage for whatever. But you've also got an NVMe slot over here, so you've got high-speed boot times, which is good to see as well. We have a coin cell battery, which is off the shelf. You just pop the coin out and away you go, so you don't even have to buy anything special. And I think for uh, a gamer who it's like, if this thing goes down, you want to get it back up running ASAP, having that being something that you could go down to your local store and buy is kind of a benefit. We do have two RAM slots that are front facing here. And realistically, everything that you would need to plug in is down the left hand side of the board here. Overall, I'm actually pretty pleased um, with what I'm seeing here. This is obviously the cooler, I'm going to guess, for the GPU. That would be our CPU over here. So lifting the battery, we have nothing, really. We've got access to the trackpad, which is removable. And it looks like the keyboard is plastic welded into the top case. It would appear that our DC jack has power input coming through here and would be relatively easy to replace. And of course we have our display cable sitting right there, threaded through the bottom in the hinge. Overall, not too shabby. Well, let's go ahead and put all this back together and see what we get for some boot times. With everything back in one piece, let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. And you know what? That's a pretty decent boot time. Nothing to really sneeze at there. And we are running 16 gigs of RAM, so pretty respectable. The Ryzen 7 3750H is going to do quite a bit of heavy lifting. And the GTX 1650 means that you're going to be able to run a good majority of the games that you will want to play at at least medium settings. The addition of the nicer refresh rate on the panel too is a nice touch. Just doing some Cinebench right now, and the fans do kick in the high gear to keep that stuff cool. This is uh, definitely something that if you were gaming, you'd probably want headphones for if you were taxing the CPU that heavily. Now, the used market on these ranges quite wildly, depending on what's available. This is not necessarily a common machine that you'll see listed in the dozens. But you will see them on some auctions as low as 250 US dollars, all the way up to 1000 if you're getting it kind of in newer condition. Because you have the dual storage uh, options, the nicer Ryzen 7 CPUs, as well as a, you know, pretty modest middle of the road mobile GPU, I can understand that these would be fairly desirable, especially considering that they do have that military standard 810G and might take a few knocks. Some of the uh, design aesthetics are definitely gamer-esque and having a few considerations to the actual gamer that might be using these is appreciated as well. At any rate, if you do have any questions about this particular unit or if you've had the opportunity to use one in this line, maybe not this specific model, I'd love to hear about your experiences with Asus gaming laptops in the description down below. And as always, if you enjoy these overviews, I would ask you to do the big four. It really does help the channel grow and is great feedback for me. And that is please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I get to feature a cool gaming laptop like this, you'll be the first to know about it. 
Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.